In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the domestic defrost timer. Now, remember, we have some appliances like freezers, walk-in freezers, and anything that has a box temperature and an evaporator temperature that's below 32 degrees Fahrenheit is going to start building up frost and ice on the evaporator. Now, frost and ice act as an insulator, and it doesn't allow the cooling to happen properly, and eventually it can be, become a big brick of ice that you'll have to go defrost manually, as well as it's going to ruin the product in the case. So the defrost timer is the brain of frost-free appliances. Okay, every single refrigerator that's in your house that has a freezer attached to it, um, most of the reach-ins that are freezers in um, restaurants, bars, all have defrost timers. What it does, it disconnects the compressor circuit and connects a resistive heating element that's located near the evaporator at regular time intervals. The defrost heater is thermostatically controls. Okay, it melts frost formation on the evaporator. Now, the way the timer is made, it has contacts in a cam that's attached to a motor. Okay, the contacts are operated by cam, and I'll show you a picture of it in a minute here. And it's connected in one of two ways. We have what's called a continuous run timer, and we have a cumulus compressor run, cumulative compressor run timer. The continuous run timer operates any time the system is plugged in. The cumulative compressor run timer only counts time when the compressor is running. And they're wired in two different ways. But first of all, let's look inside this thing. This is a domestic defrost timer with the top of its case popped off. My connection terminals are over here. Okay, this lower one here is going to be... Um, most likely it's going to be my uh, three terminal, okay? Then I have my one, two, and four. So I have one, two, and four, okay? Three is just my basically my neutral for the motor itself. This is a shaded pole motor up here. This is just another connector, connector wire that is not, that's that wire that's loose on the back here. Okay, the ones I'm worried about for sequencing is 1 to 4, which is normally closed. 1 to 2 is open. So this is a continuous run timer. Okay, this timer, if you look here, it's connected between hot and neutral, 120 volts. 1 feeds my motor, 3 is my neutral. So 1 is our power feed. Now, normal operation, 1 to 4 is closed, but 1 to 2 is open. In other words, defrost heater and defrost thermostat are not receiving any current. Okay, 4 feeds my entire compressor and evaporator fan motor. So 4 has current, but it's controlled off the thermostat. So under normal operation, system's calling. Okay, my timer's running, my current is following the blue arrows down through here, and everything is running. Now, system goes into defrost. Whatever this is set at, could be 8 hours, could be 4 hours, could be 12 hours, whatever this is set at has now switched the system. The time has expired and gone into defrost. So again, 1 to 3, I'm still running my timer motor, but now... I'm sending power down through 1 to 2, okay, to operate my defrost heater and my defrost, and which is controlled by my defrost thermostat. Now, 1 to 4 is no longer receiving power, so my compressor, my evaporator fan, and everything else has shut off. Okay, now there's a downside to this, which is why we don't use this exact timer in most commercial op applications. First of all, these things can't handle a lot of current. The second problem is that once it's defrosted, this is going to stay in defrost until the timer says it's done. Okay, there's no way to pull this timer automatically out of defrost. Now, this one's run, this timer is set up as a cumulative run timer, okay, based on compressor run time. Okay, so one to four again is my um 
is my compressor circuit. However, we feed three back, and that's what feeds my def my motor, my timer motor. Now you may be thinking, well, I'm going to energize the defrost heater and the defrost thermostat. Well, think about loads in series. Which load is going to get the majority of the voltage with resistance? So if this has a very high resistance and this has a low resistance, the defrost heater will never heat up. My timer motor is going to get all of the voltage and it will have enough to operate the timer motor. System goes into defrost. All of a sudden I now have my 1 to 2 closed. I'm still going to operate my timer motor and everything because I do have that voltage differential okay, between hot and neutral coming through my defrost heater. Okay, so again, cumulative run timer. This is in normal operation. Okay, power in on one, comes through four, comes down to my compressor circuit, feeds back into three and out two. Without, there's not enough voltage there to heat up that defrost heater. Okay, to check the continuity of contacts and motor windings, use the ohm meter. Okay, this is how you test it. You're going to use the ohm meter. The can be can be manually turned so the defrost cycle is on. You can check it with a voltmeter. You can wait for the timer to open the contact to defrost heater and reconnect compressor circuit. If the thermostat is closed, the compressor will start as the timer changes contact positions. Now, the difference again is that with commercial defrost timers, which we'll go into later on, Many commercial refrigeration use a separate time clock to control defrost circuit. The timer is co connected directly across the power line. It generally will have two time settings or more. Okay, and it will have time of day or night. The timer turns on. Okay, one for each time of day and night. And it also has how long the timer is permitted to run. These The domestic timers that we've been looking at here the how long is actually built into the timer. So take a look at these diagrams in your handouts because these are very important for um, to have as a reference if you ever have to wire these things. And again, remember they come in two sides. They come with pins 1, 2, 3, 4 or 1, 2, and 3 with, uh, um, with another wire for line voltage that's separate.